Hey guys, what's up? Murphy's Opinions here to then today. I'm coming out with you with my review of the second Pierce Brosnan James Bond film, and that is Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, if you're wondering where my reviews are for License to Kill and Goldeneye, I did mention in the previous review of The Living Daylights um, that I would jump ahead to Tomorrow Never Dies as I've already reviewed License to Kill and Goldeneye. So if you look in the playlist, um, you'll see those films already there where I've got all the reviews up, so um, I will just slot, um, you know, slot in Tomorrow Never Dies, um, obviously, in, you know, after those two films, so, because the playlist obviously is in chronological order, so, um, if you want to watch them in order, I've set that up. Anyway, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies was made in 1977, and directed by Roger Spottiswood. Um, so the plot of the story, basically, Elia Carver is an egotistical media baron, and he has the power to reach every person on the planet through his Carver Media Group network, um, except for the people of the Republic Chinese who refuse his presence in their country. When he is tied to the disappearance of a British battleship in the South China Sea, James Bond is sent to investigate. It is in Hong Kong where Bond meets Wei Lin, a member of the People's External Security Force of China. Um, so basically that's the quick summary of the plot of Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, let's get into the cast of the film. So Pierce Brosnan returns to the role of James Bond after Goldeneye. Um, and once again, I think his performance in this film is very good. It's on par with um, Goldeneye, I think. I maybe say he was slightly better in Goldeneye, but I mean, either way, these are two. this is another great performance from him. I, I never really got this, the dislike for Brosnan. Like, it's one thing, I think, you know, saying, oh, his films aren't that great or whatever. I mean, I personally, well, apart from one, I would say they were pretty solid entries, but... Um, I don't get why people sort of criticise his kind of performance as Bond. I thought it was very good. Like, it's very consistent for the most part as well throughout the series. Um, you know, he's... What I like about him as well, he brings a mixture of different elements of each Bond and kind of ties it into one, which I think is a really, really cool thing, actually. Um, you know, like he takes a kind of suave and coolness of, um, you know, Sean Connery, you know, the smoothness of Roger Moore, the grit of Dalton... Um, so yeah, I, I never really got why people disliked uh, Brosnan. I think he's great in, in this series. He's one of the best Bonds, in my opinion. Um, and then we've got the Bond girl, Waylin, played by Michelle Yeoh. Uh, she's a really awesome Bond girl, actually, I think. She's, even though this film gets a bit of a, gets a bit of mixed reception, I think people usually give her, um, you know, a lot of credit, because I think, you know, she is a great Bond girl. She's got that kind of independent thing going, which is, you know, always good to see. Um, but she's actually an interesting character as well. It's not kind of like where they try and make an independent Bond female character and she just doesn't really have much character apart from, oh, she can fight or, she, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I think Michelle Yeoh is one of the best Bond girls, or she plays one of the best Bond girls in the entire series. Um, and I think um, I think that's mainly recognised because I think, you know, as I said, uh, a ve definitely an example of a independent Bond girl done very well, I'd say. Um, and then we've got the villain, who I think is very underrated, um, Elliot Carver, played by Jonathan Price. I mean, I get, I can understand why people don't really like the motives of um, the villain, and I'll exp talk about that later on, actually. Um, but as a, just as in how he's played, and you know, by Jonathan Price, I think he's played really, really well. I think you can tell Jonathan Price is just having so much fun in this role, and I think he really gives the best performance here out of everyone in the cast. Um, he just says all the cool, the coolest lines and delivers them. You can just tell he's having just a great time in the role. And I'd say he's one of the most underrated villains in the Bond series. Um, it really just doesn't get enough recognition, in my opinion. I think he's great. Um, just so much fun to watch. And um, you know, for example, like when he says, "Will you please kill those bastards?" Oh, it's just such an awesome line. It, it just, it's so evil, and I just love him in this role. And we've got. Uh, Terry Hatcher playing Paris Carver. Um, you know what? I kind of think this character is kind of wasted. I think I like the idea that they went for, like you know, a former lover of Bond kind of returning, and you know, in in into a film. But I would have liked to. I would have liked liked it to have been an actual previous Bond girl from one of the films. You know, I think it would have been really interesting. I think maybe in terms of age as well, someone who still would have you know still made it realistic in terms of, like, you know, Bond and them being around the same age. You know, I definitely think maybe someone like Pam Bouvier from License to Kill or even um, Miriam Diabo um, as Cara from The Living Daylights. I think one of those two characters could have been quite an interesting um, Bond girl to bring back. Uh, probably more Pam Bouvier, um, you know, as she, I think she was a better Bond girl than Cara. But, um, 
Yeah, the, the actual, but you know, Paris Carver's just not that interesting, unfortunately, apart from, you know, just being a former lover of Bond. I mean, once you get past that, there's not much about her. And it, I think when she dies, you know, if it was a, a Bond girl that we'd actually seen before in a previous film, I think maybe it would have hit home with a lot more people, but it really doesn't, uh, it's not as effective as I think it could have been. And we've got Gotts Otto as um, Stamper. Uh, again, you know, another example of the muscular kind of blonde uh, henchman. Again, I just, I don't think he's terrible, but he's definitely quite forgettable, you know. I mean, his gimmick is that he kind of, he's like, you know, obviously he like stamps on people and stuff. And But I, again, I just don't really like that kind of gimmick. Like, I just felt like, you know, we'd seen it by this point, I think the, the hen, you know, the hench, uh, blonde kind of um henchman for the villain just goes a bit overdone at this point. I think Necros was kind of the last one the last one that I actually enjoyed and thought was pretty cool. I think Stamper's a bit he's not terrible but he's just very forgettable I think. Uh Jack Wade returns from Golden Eye and I don't know if I actually talked about Jack Wade in my Golden Eye review. Um but I do think Jack Wade isn't really as good. Um I think Joe Don Baker's just not as good in this film. He feels kind of forced into the into the plot if that makes sense. And it's only a brief cameo. I just think I prefer him in um I prefer him in Goldeneye, if I'm being honest. Um, but he's not terrible, as I said. One character who... He's only in one scene, but I really wanted to give him a shout-out, actually. And that's the character Dr. Kaufman, played by Vincent Schiavelli. Um, he's such an awesome henchman. Like He's he's only in one scene, but he really... He, it's one of the best scenes in the entire film. Like he's, he's so camp in this role, but he's so threatening at the same time. It's very odd. Like, you know, when he goes to try and kill Bond, it's such a good... Um, scene it, it's it's hard to kind of explain you have to just watch it for yourself really but um just a, a a really underrated character i think and maybe we'd like to see more of him in the film but then again maybe he might have been overexposed uh, anyway uh, and then we, obviously we've got the uh, mi6 regulars you know judy dench playing m once again as i said fantastic personally my favorite m i think the m character her as m would get better and better i think mainly as the films went on uh, i think the next film will be an example of that and then we've got Samantha Bond as Money Penny. Um, she's, you know, her and Brosnan have great chemistry as always. Um, I always think, you know, Samantha Bond was actually a very underrated Money Penny. I think she's actually very good and much better than the likes, you know, Caroline Bliss, who I never really thought was that great in all honesty. We see Q once again in the Q's gadget scenes, you know, with um, him giving Bond the car. You know, it's, you know, it's just, I, I really, I think, as I said, once we reach the Dalton era onwards, I think the Q character really just got better and better and there was more you could tell there's a more there was a, an established relationship between him and bond they clearly you know looked up you know bond clearly looked up to him and you know q kind of looked at him as kind of like a son in a way it was like a great father figure kind of relationship and um it really builds after after license to kill i think and you know um it, it continues here uh, or you know and I, I really do like the q scene in this film um so that's the cast uh, done. Now let's get on to the score. The score is done by David Arnold. I think it's a very strong score, actually. I think he did a very just good overall score for these films, um, in the James Bond films. Um, and I think, you know, the printing press theme, um, you know, which is his own spin on the Bond theme, I think is really done, it, really well done. It's quite short, but it's a very... I really do love that version of the Bond theme. One of my favourites, actually. And... Um, I'd say the actual main title song, Tomorrow Never Dies, is actually a a good song. I wouldn't say it's one of the best in the series, but it's definitely a good, solid entry in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think personally it's actually a very good song, especially instrumentally as well. Um, and the rejected theme that's used in the um, credits, Surrender, I think is I think if used as the main title song, it probably would have been one of the best Bond themes of all time. Um, but unfortunately, it's just saved for the credits. And a lot of the kind of instrumental versions of that song are in the film uh, for Surrender. And it's really great, actually. I really do enjoy uh, the score for this film just in general, really. Um, you know, as I said, I think David Arnold provides some very solid score uh, scores for the James Bond films that he did. Um, so when it comes to Tomorrow Never Dies, I'd say the standout scenes for this film really are the opening title sequence, um, just filled with action and tension. I really do enjoy that, actually. The motorbike chase as well. When they escape um, from Carver, I think that's really good. I mean, it does go on a bit too long, but it's still, for the most part, a very enjoyable action sequence. And the fight on Carver's submarine, actually, where they you know, fight Stamper and Carver meets his demise, it's 
um, I'd say the action in this film is very strong overall for the most part. Um, you know, if you're an action junkie, I think you'll definitely really enjoy a lot of the action sequences in this film. So, one of my overall thoughts on Tomorrow Never Dies, um, I'd say it's a very, I'd say it's a very good entry into the Bond series. Um, when it just misses out on the top ten for me personally, um, as I think there's more films I prefer, but it's a very solid attempt. I don't get this dislike for it. I think it's actually a very good film overall. Um, you know, fun action, a great score. Um, for the most part, the cast I think is very, very solid. Um, and yeah, I, I, a film that I really enjoy it is quite nineties, but I think a lot of Bond films are kind of, you know, they're very kind of, you know, a lot of them can not feel dated, but they definitely feel like products of their time. Anyway, so the next review I'll be doing is of the world is not enough. Uh, like the video, comment below, follow me on Twitter, ask.fm, subscribe to my main channel, and once again, thanks for watching, guys.